Hey guys, what's up? Nature from Protoculture and Shadow Chronicles. And it's been a while since I did a video for this channel. Uh, I've been super busy with uh, working on album material. Uh, I've also just finished uh, the Psychedelic Toolbox Volume 2, uh, which is out on www.marulamusic.com. Those are presets for Serum. Yeah, and then also working uh, quite closely with Sonic Academy and a lot of new content for them as well. So I highly recommend you go check out their YouTube channel. Uh, for all that tutorial content that they have there um, but yeah as you can see we've done a little bit of work on this channel and I'm hoping that we can start getting videos out a little bit more frequently uh, so to start things off today I've pretty much had the day off to just experiment and I've been fiddling a lot with reactor kind of getting back into experimenting with that a little bit um, more specifically reactor blocks so I just got the uh, downloaded the new uh, re-release of Michael Hetrick of Unfiltered Audio's uh, Euro React modules. Now they've been a, uh, they've been around for a while on the Reactor user library, um, but they've updated them now. There's a paid version and a free version, um, and you can go and grab that. And they're all updated for Reactor with the front panel patching now as well, which makes them a lot easier to use than they were before. Um, so we know we can do synthesizers with reactor blocks, uh, oscillators and LFOs and all that stuff. But what I want to try and do today is show you guys how to actually get some of that CV data from these more esoteric sequencer modules and use those to actually control external synths um, outside of reactor as well. Uh, so let's, uh, we're going to dive in, we're going to see what we come up with, patch some things together and experiment a little bit and uh, let's see what we can do. Cool, here we go. Um, okay, so uh, we've got a copy of Reactor uh, open here. This is one that I was working on here. We'll mute that. And we've got this Oberhausen preset lined up here. Uh, so Oberhausen's got a nice little appreciator in it, but I want to kind of get some really random sequencing going on with this. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to patch Reactor through to Oberhausen and send the CV um, data from the sequences that we have here to control our external synths. Um, so I've just kind of zeroed everything, taken out all the un unnecessary stuff. We don't need any of the outputs or anything, no mixes or anything. We're not working with audio. Um, I'm going to just, while we uh, grab an extra clock generator, because I want to have a 16th and a resetting on quarter notes as well. Um, what we're really interested in here is the, uh, let's try and find it, the uh, MIDI out, uh, I believe it is. Uh, well, let's grab a quantizer as well while we add it. There we go. Uh, it was straight over that. So we're actually looking for the MIDI out. This is going to be how we're going to talk to our external synth. Uh, let's move this one up here. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to drag in a few modules that we're going to be using the uh, bento box we're going to grab a eight step sequencer also want an lfo and are we going to be using the euro react um one of the sequences from or well, actually one of the mod sources from there we're going to grab this uh, quantity module and we'll put this up here so this thing kind of generates uh, randomized uh uh, CV data based on equations that you can set up here. Um, so let's um, let's start patching this stuff together. Uh, first things first, I'm going to want to send a gate signal uh, to actually, yeah, let's send the, I actually want the gate to reset this one every now and then. Um, so our outputs from the Quantity, we're going to be sending to the pitch as well as actually just the pitch for now, I think. Um, so we're going to send the pitch, but I want to be able to kind of restrain the notes uh, to specific chords. So we're going to send the, uh, the try signal, the output to our quantizer. And you see what it's currently doing is kind of running through in the notes. This just shows that we actually are getting CV data coming out of there. Um, and it's kind of uniform at the moment, kind of just running. You can see it's kind of quite uh, 
not too much chaos going on there, which will we'll mix it up a little bit later on. Um, but let's uh, send the output of this to our pitch. And we'll send a gate to our quantizer as well. Uh, we'll do 16th notes for that. While we add it, we can send the gate to our sequencer as well. We'll send the sequencer gate to the MIDI out as well. Um, so we've got the CV being converted into MIDI outputs here now. Um, we'll come to that in just a sec. Let's uh, set up, let's just double check that that's working. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to Oberhausen, which is currently accepting MIDI from our keyboard. Uh, let's just go to our MIDI inputs in Cubase and we're going to set this to Reactor Sequencer and I believe that's 05. I have two of the same channel now and one of them is muted. Um, let's push play and see what we're getting. Okay, so we are indeed getting signal from Reactor playing to Oberhausen. So let's just take this patch a little bit further. Um, what I want to do is firstly restrict the notes. So we're going to deselect um, everything except for a C minor chord, which will be D sharp, C, G, and we'll put in A sharp as well. Um, so as you can see now, it's not playing any of the notes in between that have been deselected. Uh, so we can now go ahead and fiddle with our quantity uh, modulation source as well and let's just add in some um, notes for the gate okay uh, so there we're getting MIDI going out uh, let's start messing around with some of these other settings I'm actually using LFO to kind of just change the shapes and speed etc of the um, the mod source that we have here. So let's just send this output of our uh, bento box LFO to the input A and we'll do a reset. Uh, the reset can go to there as well. So, um, so we've got some modulation happening on the shape which is great. Um, let's do it on the we'll do it on the chaos and the actual speed of uh, of this uh, mod source as well, and let's just see what happens. Um, click out of that. Oh, and uh, there seems to be an error in this one. You need to just make sure you disable that reset button. Um, let's just double check. Okay, there we go. I don't want it to be accepting um, mod data on that reset, otherwise it's not going to be randomizing stuff correctly for us. Let's play that back and take a listen. Cool, so that's kind of completely random um, sequence that we have coming now. We can add in extra notes as well. And play around with our timing. Cool. So that's a fairly simple example, but um, you can see now basically just using those uh, modular routings to actually control uh, Reactor, you can kind of get some pretty cool um, little setups going there, um, especially using like, let's just take a look quickly at the sequencing and logic. These are really interesting as well, these Turing generators um, inside of the Euro React mod modules. Um, there's a number of different uh, cool little uh, logic uh, modules as well uh, that you can play around with. But yeah, so that was the whole thing, just to kind of get that MIDI out from... Um, Reactor, so uh, you can actually use this as well to set up sort of 
extra controls as well if you wanted to use extra LFOs on Oberhausen which doesn't have a ton of modulation sources um, you can actually use Reactor to build extra modulation sources to actually um, help you automate data on Oberhausen um, the one thing that you do need to make sure of as well is that you keep your MIDI monitor on because this is just like a it's like a MIDI keyboard playing um, the second that MIDI monitor is off it's not going to be receiving data um, and you can also record um, you should be able to record this uh, MIDI output as well. So you can actually save sequences as well in actual uh, sections of notation and use those as well later. So this is pitch player. The other thing is everything is now in sequence as well, obviously because the clock is coming from Cubase. Cool, there we go. Um, uh, I shall catch you guys again soon. We're going to wrap that up there. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to smash the like button, hit that subscribe button, and give the little bell icon a tap as well so you guys get notifications when we have new content out. I shall catch you guys soon. Cheers.